even Barack wasn't like, hey, you know, let's talk, let's talk a while. Uh, it was just, it was cool to just like to see him in person. It's like it was almost like he was like my William Wallace, like this the person who I never thought was going to exist um, in my lifetime to actually exist in this lifetime. It still felt very much like a fairy tale. Um, so to actually meet him, you know, shake his hand, look him in the eye, it was just kind of like, oh yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, I needed you. I needed you. To, I needed you to exist. The story goes that I used to like try on different hats at, at an aunt's house. She would have this hat rack, and I would go in and put on a hat and then pretend to be somebody, and then put on another hat and pretend to be somebody else. So she said this when I was like six or seven, and she saw it. And then around thirteen, she suggested I go out for a play, and I was like, nah trying to go out to this play and I got there and there were these other kids there these other guys and I felt this sense of competition and that's kind of what that's what was fueling it at first and then I got the part and then it was just like oh this is fun this is I like this in the color purple it was my debut and I was a swing so there was no guarantee when or if I was gonna go on I was only there for two weeks as a vacation swing because someone was on vacation um, and it was, it was the last day of my two weeks. They decided they were gonna put me on for somebody. Um, that morning, somebody else got sick and called out, but I had my mind on this other person's track the whole time. And then I had to go for this other person who I hadn't really thought about. So it was just, it was just a little, you know, a little, not hiccup, but just kind of like, oh, let me switch it up. So I went up for the matinee, and then that person also called out that night. My mom was in North Carolina. She flew something she knew that I was gonna be on that night too. Something she was like, so she flew up, got a plane ticket, flew up, and was like, I, I assume you're gonna be on tonight. And I was like, I am. She's like, I'm here. Can you get me a ticket? So like my mom came and then LaShawn's was, was Seely at the time. And um, she, uh, she couldn't, she likes to acknowledge a person's first time on Broadway. And she couldn't find me for the matinee. She didn't know where I was. And then for the evening show, she knew where I was. And so it was like, it was almost like the first show was a practice run. And then my real debut happened that night. So. That was the second one was when Barack Obama came back to see Hamilton, because um, I missed him the first time. I was in a show in Seattle and my part got cut and I was just sitting in Seattle kind of like nothing to do. And I started thinking about all this material that I had that was like in notebooks and laptops in my phone, just that I've just written for me. Like I've been writing since I was like 12, 13. So, I just got the material, so I piling it together. I was like, I want to share this in some kind of way. And it was like, oh, it's like my great grandmother. Like, it's not just for me anymore. It's for other people. So I started a jam. Got started. Got a band together. Put some people together. Um, some people sing to some pieces. Some people dance to some pieces. And it kind of just evolved over time. Like, if I felt like I had to say something or I wanted to talk about something, I get something off my chest. I would put it together in a certain kind of way. And then this is this is the jam. After. I want to say it was Haiti. Haiti had it, it, that earthquake. Which earthquake, right? Um, Haiti had an earth, another earthquake, and it was a year. It was like Japan had an earthquake, Chile had an earthquake, and Haiti had an earthquake all in the same year. And it was something about the idea of like, you know, Mother Earth. Mother Earth is kind of like retaliating <laughs> um, against all the all the anger and the hatred that's happening in the world and all the terrorism that's going on. It's like, what if we could flip it? If we could like terrorize with love. Um, what would that look like? What would that sound like? What, what, what would that do? What would that then do to the earth? Um, and that's what Love Terrorist is. And now it's kind of like a, a moniker I use, Love Terrorist. And I'm trying to, trying to terrify people with, with love. What TV and film allows you to do is kind of like keep doing it until you kind of get it right, you know, and then you, you'll just take, you'll take you'll take the take that is the best, you know? So like, let me, oh, let me try it again. Oh, let me do it again. And it's, it's not limited to, okay, I'm gonna hit it this one time in front of all these thousands of people and hopefully I get it right. Um, you know, it's kind of like, the, uh, doing theater, you can kind of like, I'll do it again tomorrow. My biggest lesson was that I didn't dream big enough. Like, I dreamt only up to a certain point and then I hit that point and I was like, well, now what? You know, um, I think a lot of us do that, we, you know, we, especially if you're ambitious, it's like, I have dreams, I want to do this. And then you do it and it's like, <laughs> wait, 
Uh, so yeah, dream as big as is possible, but I'll also say like work on yourself as much as possible. Like know who you are, um, know your type, but also create your own stuff. Like, like have your own thing. Don't always rely on someone else giving you a job. Like have your own, whether it's writing, whether it's music, whether, you know, just have your own thing going on. You're putting yourself out there and um, you kind of have to not care, especially in the social media day and age. Like there was a time where you could just put it out and only a certain amount of people would see it, you know, but like now it's like, I put this out and it can, <laughs> it can be across the world. And you kind of have to be okay with, you're agreeing with, with the consequence of putting it out there as putting it out there. So you kind of have to, people, everyone has an opinion nowadays. Everyone has a Twitter account. So yeah, I think to, it's one thing to just put yourself out there. And it's another thing to pursue that as a career. And both of those things takes a, a tremendous amount of courage, I would say. Most recently, my face popped up for like three seconds on, she's gotta have it. I was on the talking junk. Um, but uh, The Last OG, which premieres April 3rd uh, with Tracy Morgan on TBS coming out. Oh, it's gonna be so lit. I'm so excited about it. It's gonna be fun. It's cool because it's a show about redemption and like, you know, trying to not necessarily get back what you lost, but like when you've lost a lot, how do you go forward? So Tracy Morgan's character went to jail for 15 years, came out to, came back to a gentrified Brooklyn. His ex-girlfriend is now like, dating some white dude living on the Upper West Side and she has a set of twins that look exactly like Tracy Morgan. Um, so it's like, what do you do when you come, like what is the, what is the, what is your path when you come back after everything's been taken away from you? Through comedy, you know, it's so, it, it, it has some like, it has some tragic moments to it, but also like it's Tracy Morgan, Tiffany Haddish, Cedric the Entertainer, like it's foolish. Like they're, they're foolish. But um, yeah, I'm excited about that. Yeah. My name is Daniel J. Watts, a.k.a. D. Watts, and I'm living life. <laughs> living life fearless. Fearlessly fearless. Living life fearless.